Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and in this video we'll be talking about Pickles UI and this video is actually a continuation of our previous video which we were talking about installation of Pickles and using the Pickles in Visual Studio. Alright, so what is Pickles UI and what is it going to make even much simpler than before? So Pickles UI is going to look something like this as you can see here. It is something which is a replacement of the command that we typed in our previous video but it is going to be even more easier if you're going to be a novice user in Visual Studio so we'll quickly see how to work with it so the installation of Pickles UI is very very simple again we can do it via the chocolatey so I will show you how to work with chocolatey because we did not discuss about installing chocolatey and how to work with chocolatey in our previous video alright so let's start working with it then so for working with the chocolatey first of all you need to open the PowerShell and as you can see the PowerShell is something which is available in all the Windows operating system as of now and I'm going to use the PowerShell with a administrator mode and then you need to install the chocolatey so how to install this chocolatey it is kind of very very simple if you just go to the Google and type for chocolatey.org the very very easiest option is to just copy this command that you are seeing right here copy this and then just paste it right here and hit enter so this will install the chocolatey into your machine so currently it's going to install the chocolatey into my machine as you can see here cool everything's okay so i'm just going to clear the screen and once the chocolatey installed and then i can easily install the different kinds of packages like pickles and pickles ui into my powershell and as you can see here Within our chocolatey, there is a tab called packages. If you just go to the packages, you can see there are different kinds of options available, like installing the chocolatey itself, installing the Google Chrome, Firefox, Flash Player, Node.js, Notepad++. So there are different kinds of tools that you can install using this chocolatey. You can also install VLC if you want. Actually, I don't have VLC in my machine, so I will quickly show you how to install VLC using the Choco. So Choco install VLC as you can see in my machine I don't have VLC yet so I'm just going to install this and it's saying that do you want to run the script I'm gonna say yes it's downloading the VLC into my machine right now and this is a very very easier option than just downloading it from the website and then installing it using the GUI clicking next 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 Rather, this kind of operation using Chaco is very, very easier. It's kind of replacement to the app get which is available in Linux operating system or yum in the sent OS of Linux. There we go. So the VLC is installed into my machine. And now if I just search for the VLC, you can see that the VLC media player is now appearing into my machine. So if I just open this, it's asking me whether you want to allow the network access and I'm going to just remove those things because I don't want to and hit continue there we go right now I have the VLC media player in my machine cool and I'm going to do exactly the same thing for installing our pickles UI as well so how to install the pickles UI you can basically search for the pickles UI right here this is how you can install the pickles and this is how you can install the pickles UI and this is the command just copy this and paste it right here and I'm gonna hit enter Actually, I have already installed the Pickles UI into my machine and that's why it is saying that the Pickles UI version 2.5.0 is already installed, which is cool. So how to call the Pickles UI? Once again, very, very simple. Just call Pickles UI and it's going to open you up the window like this, right? And this Pickles UI is very, very easier than before that we saw in our previous video. All we have to do is select the feature file, which is currently located into our machine so I'm just going to navigate to the location of my feature file so this is the location of my feature file so I'm going to select this folder and then I'm going to paste the output into d colon pickles op so let me do that and then the project name is employee test app from pickles ui just for the differentiation purpose and then version 1.0 which is great no problem and then there is one more option which says test result file and this is something which we have to generate right now 
So how to generate this test result.xml file? Actually, this is the test result.xml file which has to be generated from the nUnit console runner. So if you have not already heard about nUnit console runner, then just search for nUnit console runner and here is the console runner. There we go. So the simple command is to just type the nUnit console and then the DLL which has the test. Actually, all my tests are sitting in the EA employee test project. So if I just open this folder, pin debug, and there we go. So this is where my DLLs are actually sitting. And my DLL which is responsible for executing the test is nothing but our EA employee test.dll. So this DLL can actually run the test for me. So for executing the test, what I'm going to do is I need to first of all download the NUnit console runner. So this you can do in many different ways. You can either download the library directly from the website or you can also download the NUnit console runner from the Visual Studio. You can just right click the reference and go to the manage NuGet package and here you can search for nUnit and there is an option called nUnit console runner. So I'm not going to do this option right now. Rather, you can also download the nUnit console from the website. So if you go to the downloads, here if you download the nUnit, it will automatically bring you the nUnit console runner as well. So I have already downloaded the nUnit console in my machine, which is already available in nUnit console runner 3.2.0. So this is the NUnit console runner. So if I go to the tools, you can see this is the console runner, right? So right now I'm going to make use of the console runner to run the test for me. And for doing that, I'm just going to navigate to file, open command prompt, open as administrator. And then I'm just going to select NUnit 3-console and the path of the DLL file which has the test. So the test is actually sitting under the debug folder. So I'm just going to select the EA employee test, copy the path, and I'm gonna paste it right here. I'm just going to hit enter so that it will start running the test for me. As you can see, it is opening the browser to run the test. There we go. So it is gonna execute, I think, two or three different test cases right now. Cool. So the overall result is currently failed. And the reason is because there is one test case which is failed, which is very, very intentionally did so that we can see this in a report very nice. All right. So the test count is three and the past is two and failed is one. Cool. And you can see that the results is actually saved as a test result.xml file right here. So this is the XML file. I'm just going to select this file, copy the path, and then I'm going to go to this pickles UI and from the browse, I'm just going to search and type this guy, the test result XML file. And then I'm going to select this switch, which is nothing but the DHTML switch to on. If you switch the Excel to on, it will generate the Excel file. Or if you switch the word to on, it will generate the word file. So let's do this. Let's also switch the Excel to on and the Word to on and let's generate the file and see how it works. So there is one thing which is it's saying to select. There is a bug actually, it should be selected by now. And then I'm going to select this experimental feature on and hit generate. So this will generate the files. And as you can see, it is writing to HTML, Excel, it's tweaking the JSON file, cool. And now let's go to the output file. As you can see right now, we have a folder like DHTML, Excel, HTML, and Word. So these are the previous files that we forgot to delete basically. So I'm just going to delete them. All right, so these are the different format which has been generated. And there's a DHTML, Excel, HTML, and Word. So let's quickly see how it looks like in DHTML. So I'm just going to open this index.html. And right now you can see that we have a different options here. There is a failed option and there's a passed option here. So what is this failed? If you just click this particular employee, you can see this test case or this scenario has actually failed because of some reason. And this again, purely done for intentional reasons so that you can see this failure very neatly. 
and this particular scenario has got passed and it is set as passed there cool and if we go to the login you can see all the test case got passed so this feature itself is got passed but this employee feature has got failed as it shows there and then if i click this show or view you can see that it is showing us a failed scenario and two passing scenarios and this is the failed scenario and this is the passing scenario so if you just navigate over here it just shows you some other informations and basically this is a kind of neat reports which is generated by our pickles ui and pickles generator basically so you can send this report basically to your client and the customer so that they can understand how test is being executed and how the test is getting passed and failed this is a very very easy way to maintain your scenarios in a html file so let's quickly see the other formats as well there is an excel format if i just open this feature.xls there is a very very simple excel and login option in this table of content i'm just going to click this employee and you can see that it is red color meaning this test kit got failed and this test case got passed it's in green color which is cool and you can also see how the word document looks like so if i open this word let's say yes and let's go to the login it is in green color because it got passed and there is a red color for this particular feature and this test case got failed basically so it's just showing you the fail which is cool and this is how you can maintain your reports as well as your feature file in a very very neat way using the pickles thank you once again for watching this video and have a great day